Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and we thank you for the great day that you have given us. We thank you because we know we are not here in vain. We are here for a divine purpose that you may give us a word, that you may touch our, our lives, and that we may touch you with our praise, with our worship, with our hearts as well. King of glory, even as we share your word, I pray it will be a good seed sown in fertile ground, and it will bear much fruit that remains in each of our lives. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Today I'm going to share a message entitled, Ways. Somebody say, Ways. We are going to talk about ways. And I'll begin with a, a scripture in Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 25. He says, there is a way that seems right uh, to a man, but its end is the way of death. I'll read that again. Proverbs 16, 25, he says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Another version says, but its end is the road that leads to death. And another version says, but its end are the ways that lead to death. It may seem right to a human being. It may seem right according to your eyes, according to your planning. But when in actual sense, it just seems to be. It just gives you a picture of probably you are going where it should go. But in actual sense, it is leading you to death. It is leading you to destruction. All that glitters is not gold. That is an old saying that states that not everything that looks precious or true turns out to be so. And you have to understand that. It is not true that uh, if someone uh, looks this way, probably they are exactly that. And some people say do not judge a book by its cover. Because looks are not everything. It may seem right, but when it is not right. It may look right, but when it is totally wrong. And the world has come up with new ways of doing everything. Everything has a new way of doing it. But you ought to be very careful, child of God, not to follow the patterns of the world. Everything that you see in this life, the world has another idea for it. God said marriage is between one man and one woman. And the world comes out with a new pattern and says, no, there is another way. We can do it as this way as well. By the way, a man can also marry a man and can also be a marriage, the world says. And a woman can also marry a woman and can still be called marriage. Because what's marriage anyway? Then they begin to redefine it. And they think they're leading themselves to pleasure, but it is leading to destruction. Make sure you do not follow the way of the world because it will never lead you to life. God's way is always the right way. And God's way is always Jesus' way. And because Jesus is the word, God's way is always spelled out in his word. Hallelujah. So there is a pattern of the world. There is a way of the world. There is a way people do things. But there is a way God wants things to be done. And if you want to know how God's things are supposed to be done, just know that God's way is Jesus. And his way is in his word. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know, we are in a generation whereby if you do some things, they may, they may call you outdated. And let me tell you something. God's way may seem outdated, but it will always be the right way. Hallelujah. Amen. Regardless of who says what, God's way will always be the right way. Sometimes it looks like it's the boring way. Sometimes it looks like it's the loser's way. And they tell you, come on. Do you think those things still exist? Eh? The world has changed. This is how things are now done. Do you think you're going to get any job without a connection? And the connection they are talking about must be a bribe. But, the, you know, the world puts some icing on its filthy way. 
And that's why it can seem like it is right. It is always sugar-coated. It is always gold-plated. The way of the world. They always put something nice on, on the cover. And that's why it can seem right. Because the cover always looks nice. On the outward, it looks like indeed. So they will not tell you you are going to give a bribe. They tell you, no, things have changed. If you need a job, you need to appreciate someone. So they will call it an appreciation. But you give the appreciation before you get the job. And you'll, you'll ask somebody, but how do you appreciate somebody for something that you have not even gotten? Isn't that a bribe? And they say, no, no, no. That is working in faith. Because you are already thanking him for the things hoped for. Eh? Sugar-coated lies, sugar-coated deception. And that's why it may seem right. Why? Because on the outward, it always looks good. If it looked the way it looks, with a placard and a signpost saying, I'm leading to death, nobody would ever take that way. But because on the outward, it promises life. It looks like, hey, you never know. It may be leading me to something nice. And people will keep telling you that is outdated. So you mean you are going to wait until you get married to that guy? You think these days you can have a man like that? No, 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 no. These days things changed. You first move in with him, and then you guys start planning for your wedding. Things have changed. No, no, no. When it comes to God, his ways have never changed. Hallelujah. And that way may seem right, but in the end, it is leading to destruction. Some people even have uh, their nice explanations of why they should take that way. Like what I just told you. Some people say, but you may not know the person you're going to marry, so it would be good to stay with them for some while before you commit. That is not God's way. God's way is, see somebody that is fit for marriage. Do not touch them until you marry them. I didn't hear any amen to that. Amen. Pray about the decision you want to make. Make sure they are ready for marriage and you're ready for marriage. And if both of you are in agreement, seek the Lord about it. And then marry each other officially. And then you can do whatever you want. Then her body is yours and his body is yours. Before that, God says, it is fornication and it is a sin. The world may call it uh, making love, moving out, having fun. But God will still say it is called fornication. He has never changed the definition. Say amen to that. Amen. God's way may seem outdated. It may seem out of fashion for the generation that you are in. But it will always be the right way. It will always be the right way. It has never changed. When it comes to the way we go to the Father, people have devised so many things, so many ways, so many religions, so many cults. But as I told you, God's way is Jesus. It will never change. He says in John 14 and verse 6, that I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that has never changed that cannot change, and that will never change. If you want to enter into the kingdom of God, you must go through this one way called Jesus. You must be born again. You must make him your Lord and Savior. Regardless of how many ways come, man will have ways. But God has a way of doing everything, and that way will always be the right way. God's way is Jesus. And God's way is always in his word. And it may seem outdated, but it will always be the right way. He says something important here in Matthew chapter 7, the words of Jesus. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 to 14. What does he say? He says, enter by the narrow gate. 
For wide is the gate and broad is the what? Broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. A scripture that some of us may know and probably some of us have never seen it because these are some of the scriptures we rarely preach about in today's church. Not in all the churches, but generally speaking, these days most of the scriptures about the promise that God has for me. And these ones that may seem hard, sometimes we avoid them because the congregation may not like them. But let me tell you something. It is not about what you like. It is about what God said. Help me tell your neighbor that. It's not about what you like. It is about what God said. And here he says, you need to enter by the narrow gate. Don't take away because it is easier. Did you hear that, child of God? Don't take away because it is easier. Take it because it leads to life. Even when it is more difficult. Don't take one that is easier because, hey man, this is the one that is easier. People keep going into destruction. Many people are going to hell. Many people keep falling away from the truth because they are looking for what seems easier. What is easier may not be what is right. It's not necessarily true that every right thing always has to be hard. But many a time, the bad thing or the wrong thing tries to seem easier. And it's not always easier, by the way. It only seems easier, but it's never easier. Hallelujah. So don't take it because it seems easier. Because it looks easier to you. Do you know that it is, it is harder to live a sinful life? It is more costly. It's more expensive to your life, to your mind, than to live a righteous life. Because imagine like a drunkard. You make all your money and you drink it in one night. And then you have a hangover. And then you develop liver issues. And then you have to treat the liver. It is even harder. But someone says, hey, living a life where, where I cannot drink. God, that life is hard. But this one is easier. You keep healthy. You are never out of your senses. You never lose your mind. You never wake up to wonder how you slept with a woman you don't know. You don't have to deal with some health issues for life. You never lose your respect and dignity among the people that know you. It is easier to actually live right, to walk through the narrow gate, than what seems to be easier to the people in the world. So sometimes these things that we call easier in the long run are never easier, actually. Like some people think you can easily lie and go out with it. But eventually the life of lies is harder than the life of truth. Because when you lie, you always have to keep remembering what you said. You have to have a lot of memory, man. But when you speak the truth, you never have to remember what you said. Because whatever you said is anyway. But every time somebody is coming to you like, ha, ah, what did I tell this one? Oh, yeah. Did, is this the one I told um, Grace or I told him um, Ruth? I think, I think he will greet me and I will know. And then he doesn't greet. And you're like, ah, I'm still confused. Did I tell him? Did I tell him I'm Rose, Ruth, Grace? Oh, I'm Martha. I, I don't remember. You, you have to keep remembering even your name. <laughs> Such a hard life. But for you, it seems easier when you are lying because at that point, moment, you don't have to think. Anyone ask for your name, just tell them whatever name you want. They ask you if you did it, you just say, I did it. Because that's what they want to hear. But later on, you have to keep remembering what you said. And you have to keep maintaining the previous lie with another lie. And when they become two lies, you have to get another two to maintain them. Now they are four. And when they become four, you have to get eight to maintain them. It is a harder life. But on the outward, it looks easier. It looks easier. So child of God, 
Don't take it because it is easy. Take it because it is the right one. Hallelujah. Amen. Take it because it, the, it is the one that leads to life. Even when it is harder, even when it is more difficult, choose to take the right way. Though he says that when you enter by the narrow gate, it is difficult, but its way leads to life. Hallelujah. And he also says something in that scripture that we just read. You don't have to take away because many are taking it. The right one is often taken by a few. Don't just follow the majority. When it comes to the way God looks at things, democracy is not necessarily right. It's not about how many people vote for no or yes. Even if the entire country votes for homosexuality, God will still say that broad way is leading people to destruction. It's not about the majority. Help me tell your neighbor, neighbor. Right is not about majority. Hmm? And amazingly, as he says here, that narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. That which leads to life, that which leads to godliness, that which leads to godly pleasure, because there's worldly pleasure, there's carnal pleasure, but there's also godly pleasure. That which leads to godly pleasure, that which leads to life and joy in Christ, usually, oftentimes, a few take that way. And usually where you find so many people taking the same way, you need to first ask yourself a question. Is it coincidental that all of us are going in this way? Or is it that there is another that many people would not want to take? Usually, you don't have to follow the crowd. Because oftentimes, the right way is taken by a few. Hallelujah. So don't take it because many people are doing it. Don't do anything because everyone is doing it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Don't do anything. Because everyone is doing it. Because you don't even know everyone. And who told you you have to do anything because everyone is doing it? You are not everyone. You are someone. And that someone is not just anyone. So you don't do anything just because everybody is doing it. Because you are not anybody else and you are not everyone. You are just somebody that has to do the right thing. So you do it because it is right, not because many people are doing it. You ask someone, why did you get into this relationship? And you say, yeah, I actually didn't want to get into a relationship while at campus, but my entire class, everyone had somebody. Look at that foolish talk. Everybody had somebody, so that's why you also got somebody. Don't do anything because most of the people are doing it, because many people are doing it. No, the way that leads to life is not for the numbers. It's not for the majority. It is not for everyone. It is for the few that are willing to take the right way, regardless of whether it is difficult, regardless of whether it is what is supposed to be done. If everybody is giving a bribe, do not give a bribe. You be the old man out, the old woman out, even if you are to lose a job. That's why he say, that's what he says when he says the way which leads to life is difficult. And some people say, but I hate difficulty. If you hate difficulty, you may end up in the broad way, the one that takes people to destruction. You would rather embrace difficulty, but knowing that it is in the right way. Hallelujah. You'd rather stay not married because you are trying to take the right way. Instead of just getting married like all the others. Those ones are here who, who what word do you use these days? Is it smile quite a The word even seems weird. I've never really understood what you guys mean by that quite a word, but it even sounds weird. When I interpret it is stumbling, 
making yourself stumble. That is the clear understanding of the word in English. If you are walking and you stumble on yourself, the next thing is to fall. There is nothing good out of I hear stumbling upon yourself. And I hear some people are doing those things. I don't even know how they do them, but you know, sometimes you pass by social media and you find words and you wonder what is happening to this generation. You make sure you do things the right way. You'd rather take long to get married, but when you know, I've not tried to sleep with a man so he can marry me. I've not gone to the wrong places to seek a man. I've, I've not lowered my spiritual standard in the name of trying to, uh, to go where people are so that I can get married. No. You follow this way that many people fear. Do it the right way. It may be difficult, but it is worth it. Hallelujah. Because it is the right way. It is God's way. And you know the reason the wrong way often seems right is because it tends to be more pleasing. It tends to be more pleasing. It, 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 it appeals to your carnal man and tends to be less tedious. But it is appealing to the flesh, not to your spirit. So it is more pleasing, but to who? To the flesh, to the sinful nature, but not to your spirit. Hallelujah. And many times it seems less tedious. Imagine when you don't even have to sit for exams. And you just get a D1 anyway. Doesn't that seem more pleasant? Less tedious? You don't go to class? You, you, you don't do tests? You don't do exams? But at the end of the semester, you have an A for that course unit. Isn't that less tedious? Isn't it simpler? It sounds so. And what is the cost? Just be nice to the lecturer. And you know what nice means? You understand. <laughs> but at the end of the day, what results out of that niceness? HIV AIDS. Pregnancies. And then you call them unwanted. And the next thing is murder. Abortion. Because abortion is murder. But it seemed easier it seemed less tedious in the beginning. You didn't have to do a lot. Guess what? It ends up being more costly than you ever thought. Because it was only appealing to your sinful nature, to your carnality, and not to your spirit. Let us read Proverbs 12 or 15. He says, the way of a fool. The way of a what? The Bible talks about fools, and I don't want you to be one. So make sure you look for every scripture that talks about fools in the Bible and avoid to be what it says fools are. It says the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But a wise man does what? Listens to advice. Another version says a wise man listens to counsel. And in this instance, when you analyze the scripture, it shows you that a fool is one who insistently takes a, the wrong way until they are destroyed. Because just a few verses from there, he talks about how if you move with the wise, you'll become wise. But if you move with fools, you'll end up in destruction. So that means that a fool is one who insistently takes the wrong way until they are destroyed. Another person said that a fool is one who remembers to do the right thing when it is too late. Did you hear that? So here he's talking about this fool. And he says, who is the fool? One that is always right in his own eyes when they are taking their way. Even if you tell them you are headed to destruction, say, ah, uh ah, -uh. I know what I'm doing. Eh? And you keep telling them, but can't you see where you're going? There is a ditch. Me, I know what I'm doing. You are standing in the middle of the road and heavy trucks are coming at a terrible speed. Who told you they will knock me? 
Jesus is coming back. And if you are not born again, you are going to hell. When he comes back, we will ask him why he made us have this beer on this planet. Eh? If God does not want us to have more than one woman, why are there so many women more than men? They always have those foolish questions. And according to them, they are wise in their own eyes. Not until they are destroyed. If you don't want to end up in that way of destruction, don't be wise in your own eyes. Listen. Help me take your neighbor. Listen. Listen. Make sure you listen. In Proverbs 30, 12, he talks about a generation that is just like what he just talked about in Proverbs 12, 15. And many times when you interact with most of the young people in this generation, you realize this is the generation that the man was talking about. He says, there is a generation that is pure in its own eyes, that is right in its own eyes, yet is not washed from its filthiness. If you want to be wise, if you don't want to be a fool, make sure you are not part of that generation that is having a lot of filthiness, a lot of wrong ways, yet still claiming to be pure, yet still claiming to be on the right path. And how do you make sure you are not part of that generation that is going to perish like that? Make sure you listen to wise counsel. Listen to advice. Do not take yourself to be so wise in your own sight. The people that have been in church for longer are telling you that is wrong. And for you are saying, no. Me, I read a verse and I got a new revelation. I'm under the grace. Even if I sleep with a girl, uh, it is my flesh that is sinning, not me. For the Bible says when I get saved, I'm one spirit with the Lord. And as he is, so I am. You people are just preaching legalistic messages. You, you have never read this revelation. We are a generation that is deeper. Hey, you are a generation that is deeper. And upon your filthiness of fornication and all the deception that is going on, you still claim to be pure. You still claim to be right. That is a fool. In the wrong way, but still looks at themselves as purely wise and only leads to destruction. Do not be part of that generation. Don't follow that generation that stubbornly believes it's right and pure without minding its filth. Listen to wise counsel. Listen to what the word says. Listen to the people that came before you. And I'm not saying everything that the people came before you say is right. But listen and see. It cannot be that your pastor is wrong. Your pastor's wife is wrong. And then your father is also just like your pastor, they're all wrong. And then your elder brother is also wrong. And everybody is wrong. You alone are right. That is the way of a fool. You keep some silence and you pause and you ask yourself, how come that all these people who do not even know each other, who I respect and who I know are spirit-filled, are saying this? Probably there is something. And there may not even need to be many. Because if you are a listener, you will know which voice to listen to. And we need discernment. Tell your neighbor we need discernment. Mm. We always need discernment to tell between what just seems to be right and what is actually right. That takes discernment, child of God. Because I told you, even the wrong way is always sugar-coated. It is made to glitter like gold. It is covered in some nice package. But you need discernment always to tell a way that is right from one that just seems to be right. Sometimes they may almost look exactly the same. And actually the wrong one oftentimes looks better. It is exaggerated. But you need discernment. And as we pray today, I want us to pray for that discernment. That you will not end up in a wrong way thinking it is the right one. You will not end up in a wrong relationship because it seems right. You will not end up with a wrong person for life because they seem to be the right ones. You will not end up on a wrong job 
because it seemed to be right. And when, if they ask you why did it seem to be right, it had more money than the other one. It may have more money than the other one, but when it's not the right one, you need discernment to tell that. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us read one more verse. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 7. Proverbs 16 and verse 7. He says, when a man is ways, please the Lord. When a man is what? When a man is ways, please the Lord. He, talking about God, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Hallelujah. Child of God, let your ways be pleasing to the Lord. And you will see victory in everything that you do in this life. When you read this scripture, you get to realize that walking in ways that please the Lord is a way of attaining victory without struggling. Because he's talking about a man here that does not even have to fight his enemies. He's talking about a man here that does not have to wage a lot of wars. But because his ways are pleasing to the Lord, the Lord takes over the part of making sure that this man is at peace with his enemies. And you know, you cannot just be at peace with your enemies unless they have realized and acknowledged that they cannot handle you. Hallelujah. When you read Genesis 26, you, re you, you find a story there about Isaac and these Philistines who did not like him because he was prospering, yet they were not prospering. And they would keep filling up his wells and stopping them. But he would keep digging more wells. Not until they come to a place of realizing the man is too prosperous that we cannot fight him. Hallelujah. And they said if we cannot fight him, let us join him. If we can't fight him, let us make peace with him. Because he's greater than we are. He's higher than we are. We just can't handle him. And it happens so many, in so many instances in the Bible. That God did this to the people that believed in him. That he would just place them at a level whereby their enemies could not afford to keep being their enemies. Hallelujah. So when you focus on pleasing the Lord, you won't have to focus on winning your enemies. The Lord will handle them for you. Hallelujah. Amen. You focus on seeking the Lord. Focus on serving the Lord. Focus on doing that which is right. And that woman who bewitched you so that you will never study will start calling you her son. Hallelujah. You'll go back to the village and the people that were bewitching you, that tried to poison you so that you never make it in life, they'll begin to say, our child has made it. Our daughter has brought us a husband. Hallelujah. Amen. When she's the one that cast you and said, you will never marry. You'll never be anything in this life. You'll never amount to anything. Oh, you do what pleases the Lord. And she will see what she never expected in your life. And she will just get down on her knees. And she will glorify your God. Hallelujah. Quit fighting with the witches. You do what pleases the Lord. Because when a man is ways please the Lord, the Lord makes sure that he does whatever it takes to make sure that your enemies are at peace with you. Your enemies don't just get to be at peace with you because they want to. They get to be at peace with you because they just can't contain it. Because they have seen what the Lord has done. If you want to see God lifting you up above your enemies, you do what pleases the Lord. Even when nobody's doing it, you do what pleases the Lord. Hallelujah. Get up on your feet and make a declaration. Say in the name of Jesus, I choose to do that which pleases the Lord. For I know that when my ways please the Lord, I will not have to mind about my enemies. I will not mind about their curses. I will not mind about their witchcraft. I will not mind about their demons. The Lord will fight them for me. The Lord will elevate them above me. The Lord will give me victory above them. And over them. 
and over their devices. In the name of Jesus. That is why I choose to walk in the ways that please the Lord. And my God in heaven, I pray you empower me to do exactly that. Forgive me, Lord, for the time I have walked in a way that is not yours. Forgive me for the moments that I have walked in other ways that are not right, that do not please you. Forgive me, Lord. Grant me the ability to walk in your ways. Grant me the ability to discern between the right way and that which seems to be right, but when it leads to destruction. Pray in Jesus' mighty name in your own words. Make that prayer as you understand it according to the message that you have heard this day. Make a personal prayer to the Lord that he will lead you in the way that leads to life, in the way that leads to godly pleasure, in the way that causes you to be promoted in the sight of God, in the way that is not defiling unto you, in the way that is not a way of compromise or sin. May the Lord grant you the grace to walk in the right way, even when you have opposition, even when people do not like you, even when people are speaking ill about you, may God grant you the grace to keep going the right way. In the name of Jesus, may God give you the grace to go through the narrow gate. May God give you the grace to take the right way that leads to life, even when it is difficult, even when it is hard, even when you don't have a lot of company. May God grant you the grace to stand your ground. Oh, may God grant you the discernment, child of God. May God grant you the discernment that you will not take what seems to be right when underneath it there is death, when in front of it, there is death. I pray that God grants you discernment. Discernment. Precious Holy Spirit. I pray for discernment. Fill us with discernment. Sensitivity to your voice that we will know how to differentiate right from what seems right. And I pray, Lord, that as we walk in your ways, Lord, that you'll be pleased with us. May you be pleased with our lives. And may we have a room for you to fight our battles that we do not need to fight. May we see you fighting our battles. May we see you elevating us above our enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I give you praise and I give you honor for you are good God and your word is bringing life and light unto us and bearing much fruit that remains in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. That is your word for today.